Welcome everybody. Today I'm going to talk about the Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi motherboard from Asus. So I recently put together a build of a 3900X, which I'm very excited about by the way. And uh, to, to uh, put that 3900X in a safe home, I chose this motherboard. So lower cost board than some of the other mid to high range boards. But it's packed with a ton of features. Um, a couple things that I really liked about it is one, this whole notion of the durable, stable, and reliable. Um, Asus makes a great board. I have no issues with it. This one also has eight SATA ports, which I was pretty excited about. So there's, if you can see my mouse, there are um, four SATA ports right here that are facing this way and there's four down here. So I was pretty excited about that as well. Um, I believe it has two, I think right here, there's an NVMe slot. I know it has at least one, I, I didn't check. A few things I don't like is it's got the fan. Okay, I don't really want a fan on my motherboard, but it's there. I did put in two uh, graphics cards. I put in a GTX 1060 which is only about the, the width of this board right here. This right here. I put in an older GTX 960, which went on this slot down here, and it everything fit just fine, so I didn't have any issues there. On this board, I used a, uh, a Noctua NHU-12A. You have to make sure that the because these uh, memory slots are right up against here, you don't have a lot of room. So you gotta make sure everything is in its place, nice and tight. But uh, it all fit in there, I didn't have any issues. I pulled a rookie move when I put it together and I plugged in the 24 pin power supply here, but I couldn't get it to boot and I sat there for about 30 minutes going, what's going on? And it turns out, yeah, you gotta, you gotta plug in these up here as well. You at least have to put in the eight pin power connector up here. So it has two separate power connectors. Um, optionally, you can also plug in a four pin. Uh, I didn't do that and it said you don't need to do that unless you're running two high-end cards here, like maybe 280 Ti's or 380, something like that. So uh, if you're running a lot. But anyway, fantastic board. So then I got to the uh, using, you know, I finally got things booted up. So I started using it and I noticed that my sound was terrible. And then I realized that I didn't have a audio uh, equalizer set up like I did on my old rig. And so I went to the sound settings and I realized that this does not have an equalizer. So then what I did was I, I went and I searched around and I found that there's something called the Realtek Audio Console. So let me see if I still have that thing. Um, okay, so check this out. I pulled up the Realtek audio console, right? And I'm like, hey, this is gonna be great. I got my new motherboard. And um, so let's go. And here's an equalizer. So I started messing around with this. Nothing happened. Um, then I, uh, you know, I'm changing these. My audio's not changing. This only applies to the digital output um, and, and not the speakers. So then I'm like, well, how do I change the equalizer on the speakers? And I could not find anything, right? So all of a sudden I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, it's 2020 and I can't even use an equalizer on my awesome motherboard that I just bought. So I really love music and I'm not gonna listen to music not running through an equalizer because it just sounds flat to me. I came across this article on Reddit and you know basically this person said the same thing. Motherboard, blah blah blah, nothing works. And then I started looking at this equalizer APO at the bottom and I had never used that so I downloaded it and tried it out and it works fantastic. Now this person says that you know, they're worried that Equalizer APO may not work in the future because Windows 10 is always changing and all that. But at least for now, it's still working. Uh, I guess worst 
worst thing that may happen is it stops working and either they'll fix it or I'm just going to go buy a cheap sound card so I can get an equalizer back. But what I wanted to show you was let's look at, let me pull up equalizer APL and there's two parts to it and I'll show you real quick. So the first part of equalizer APO is kind of intimidating if you've never messed with it. And I'm going to show you why this says peace. But basically, you can install all of these different types of filters and adjustments for your speakers or your line input, and, and then it will automatically you know, work properly. The thing is, though, before you do that, a separate thing that pops up called the configurator, and it looks like this. So let me, let me just close this one. So configurator looks like this. And what it does is for your playback devices or your capture devices, you specify which device you want Equalizer APO to work on. And if you don't do this, it's not gonna work, right? So what the one thing I found is that for the speakers, you had to turn this on, do pre and post mix, install APO. And for the speakers, I had to do install as SFX slash EFX experimental. You set that, you hit close, and then it, you'll reboot your machine and your speakers will work. For capture devices, it's different, or at least I found it to be different. You hit this troubleshooting thing, you just do it on the premix, and you install it as LFX GFX, and then it will affect your microphone, right? So if you have a some sort of microphone, it, you, you can do it that way. So anyway, uh, by doing this, um, you can now start putting an equalizer on your uh, speakers, your, your sound output, and your microphone, which is great. The next thing was, I figured there must be something uh, that I was missing, and there's a program called Peace. This is like a companion program to Equalizer APO. When it comes up, you can choose either the simple interface or the full interface. They're almost the same. I'm just gonna do the full interface to show you what it looks like. And let me just show you real quickly. So what I have here is I associated Peace with a, um, a profile called Rock. So this is my equalizer for my speakers and you see it's tied to the device for speakers. So you basically set your profile, set your device, and hit save, and it will save it for that device. Then I set one up for the microphone separately, okay? So every time you switch it. So now it's set up where this is for my voice, and I haven't really tuned it very well to do that, you know, velvety like radio voice but uh, I'll get there and um, it's tied to my uh, microphone right so now I have two separate profiles one tied to my speakers when I'm listening to music the other tied to uh, my microphone and the way that you make these uh, active is you click this little robot thing and when you do that, it pops up. Across the top, you have activate always. And these are, that's what we want. We want these two configurations to always be active. So I select rock and I hit the arrow and it puts it over here. And then I select vocal, hit the arrow, puts it over here. And by doing that, these two configurations are always on. So my speakers always sound great and um, my microphone everything's passing through those audio equalizers, right? This piece equalizer thing is it will control equalizer APO. So you really don't even need to use that other interface, which is all crazy looking, right? This one's a little crazy too, but it's a less crazy than the other one. So anyway, big shout out to uh, Peter and uh, the guy who wrote this. It's uh, open source, free software fantastic and I hope you keep it up it sounds fantastic that's my quick update on the Asus gaming x570 plus 
The uh, BIOS is great. The board looks great. Don't forget to plug in both power uh, sources or it's not going to run for you. That's it, folks. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you had a great day and a safe day. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. It would really help me out. Thank you. Bye.